We see here that Jonah was a prophet who heard from God. It was one whom God used. Yet he was disobedient in one area which he considered trivial. God told him to go preach to the city of Nineveh. It was a city of the Assyrians. And he blatantly disobeyed God's command. It's a dangerous thing to disregard those things which God is trying to point out to you. Because they will become snares and they may cost you your salvation. He found himself on a ship en route to Tarshish, which was in the opposite direction. There's a way that seemeth right unto the man, but the end thereof is destruction. Now see, Jonah had a problem. His problem was bigotry. And there are many people, if I may say even myself, who have to deal with some of our spiritual hangups. While he was asleep on the ship, God caused a storm to develop. And the men aboard the ship began to realize that this was no natural storm. The shipmaster called to Jonah. And he asked, what are you doing, O sleeper? When we are outside the perfect will of God, we are asleep because we have not discerned the Lord's purpose for our lives. Even though these men were of pagan nations, they realized God was near. And they told Jonah, call upon God for deliverance. One thing about deliverance, it only comes through our obedience to God. The men on the ship asked Jonah, why have you run from God? We need to ask ourselves, what is it that causes me to be entrapped in these things? And these snares of life. Jonah's spiritual hang-up was so great that he'd rather drown in the sea than to do God's work. Than to preach the gospel truth to the Assyrians who had enslaved the people. And I tell you as a witness that it's hard to kick against the prayer. And Jesus is sharper than any two-edged sword. For he divides between the souls and the spirits. But one thing Jonah forgot to keep in mind was that God is near. The word says that God had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah up. And some trials and tribulations are set in order to break the yokes of stubbornness and disobedience Amen. off our soul. Amen. Like Jonah, we find ourselves swallowed up in a gall of bitterness. That's of our own doing. Yeah. One thing about God's grace is that it will teach your heart to fear. And this is where we pick up our lesson today. Jonah is now in the belly or in the stomach of this great fish. And the word of God records in chapter 2 verse 1 it says, And Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto you, Lord. And he heard me, out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardst my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods come past me about. <laughs> all thy billows and all thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again to thy holy temple. When we realize our backslidden situation, we need to remember that God is near to straighten our hearts and our minds. And a cry by reason of our afflictions will get God's attention. To whom much is given, much is required. He says in verse 5, the waters can pass me about, even to my soul. The death close round about, and the weeds were wrapped about my head. This man was in a slithery and slimy and bi-filled situation. And when we disobey God, we find ourselves in the same place here spiritually. And let it be known that God is not mocked. And everything we do in this body, we will 
reap thereof. If we sow genuine love, it shall be hung about our necks in honor. If we sow weeds, they shall be wrapped about our head in shame. We can't get upset when evil things happen because of our own doing. Because Jonah got upset because he disobeyed God. Not because God treated him falsely. It's a wrong thing to blame God when we are in trouble for our own sins. And we can't blame God for the results of our disobedience. Whatever seeds we sow, whether naturally or spiritually, we will have to reap them. If I sow seeds of disobedience, wrath, malice, hatred, murder, or backbiting, I will have to taste of their bitter roots. Verse 6 says that Jonah records that I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet, can, yet hast thou brought my, up my life from corruption. O oh Lord, my God. Jonah realized that even when he was, had made his bed in hell, God was near. If we repent of our wrong decisions, our wrong thinking, our wrong speaking, our wrong motives, he is near to deliver us. When my soul fainted within me, Jonah says, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto me, into thy holy temple. And there's another person in scripture who can really relate to what Jonah was going through. And the Bible records in the 15th chapter of Luke of a younger son of a rich man who had two sons. He had requested of his father of his rightful inheritance before the time. It's a dangerous thing to be young, to be zealous without any understanding. Because we will find ourselves in a destitute situation where we cannot see our way out. So, the father gave him his inheritance. The word of God says soon thereafter he left him to live his life by his own means, his own rules, his own governance. But all without any spiritual guidance. And because due to the lack of the spiritual guidance and ignorance on his part, he spent all his inheritance. And lo and behold, in the land there was a drought. It's a dangerous thing to realize we're coming to parched pavement in our spiritual walk. Our spiritual talk and our spiritual way of being. And then Jesus is no longer there, no longer hearing our prayers. A drought came into the land. And he found himself having to go into indentured servitude. He went from being a prince down to hired help. The Bible says the, the hunger of his belly caused him to jump in the pit with the pigs. And the hunger of his belly was so great that he found himself on his knees and scrounging and scrambling with that which was unseemly for a Hebrew person. He found himself fighting with these pigs for the husks. And the husks are left over, are the leftovers from when the farmer plucks all the corn off that's fit for the palace or fit for the house. And the husk is tossed over to the pig. And amongst all that snorting and all that breeding and all that and all that uh, 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 mucus coming on the, on the snout of these pigs, he found himself fighting these pigs. And bite into these very husks. It's a horrible thing to know that we are in a pig pan spiritual. Yeah. And everyone else can see it but us. Yeah. And many of us who are young are in pig pants. And many of us who have grown up in the church have forgotten our first look. Yeah. But God is in. He found himself biting into these husks and eating and ingesting all this mess. When we're in the world and when we leave the house of God, we begin to feed ourselves on vile meat that's infested with flowers. The word of God says while he was biting and while he was eating, somewhere between nature, he came to 
himself. And he remembered that God is near. And he said within his heart, my father has many servants who have bread enough and to spare. He had made up his mind that he would go back and repent to his father and to heaven. He had realized that it would be better to be one of his father's highest servants than to be in the house of destitution in the world. King David says, for a day and night horse is better than a thousand. And I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. All that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of my flesh, and my pride of the very life I'm living. And God is not pleased with the young people in the world today. And it's the young preachers that need to be corrected and draw near to the altar of God. And I can tell you as a witness, people will have to pray and pray them demons out of you. Because God is there. We heard the message this morning, my friend. That was the Holy Ghost speaking. Amen. 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 Young people, draw near yeah. and run for your life. Yeah. And those of us who are in the ministry, woe unto you, young prophets. Yeah. You forsake my word. Yeah. How do we so forsake the word? We disobey what God's telling us. And sometimes it's simple. God told Jeremiah, don't marry. Not that marriage was bad, but there was a plan for his life. All he told Jonah was, go preach. But for a preacher who is called by God to not preach because of hatred, or to not to warn the people, because of malice, you will find yourselves, I have found myself in the belly of the way. Because we have forgotten that God is near. He knows our thoughts. When we lay upon the bed, he knows about the schemes and plots of young people. How we come in at certain times of the year and then we escape out the next. Yeah. Yeah. But the dangerous ones are those who grew up in the church. Those who are homegrown. They know the way. But because of pride and filthiness. They begin to walk disobedience. And that's why when they come into the house, it's a witchcraft that you see. I can only preach from experience. And there are people in here who will testify to what I'm saying. And I say this out of fear for my life and for yours. I've been mandated to tell the truth of the gospel. But I have to learn to live it now. And I can look pretty now. But when I'm by myself, way up in Wilmington and nobody else is around. My wife is not there. Minister West is not there. Nobody's there. When the young women come to me, what do I say? When they want to joke about me celebrating the Passover, what do I say? Do I smirk? How do I live before God? Because sooner or later, the Spirit of God will show you. What I am doing, whether it be good or bad. 
Because God is always near. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the prodigal son had to come to a point of destitution. And the whole reason why Jesus allowed his power to be written was so that we don't have to sink to this state. Our whole duty as a person, why are we here on earth, is to fear God and then to keep the commandments. And the word of God says that Solomon was instructed by David. Son, take my commandments. Take the law of your mother and bind them. About thy name. Why? Because whenever I'm tempted, whenever I'm going through trials,
his son, when this son's father saw him afar off, this boy had in his mind, I'm going to serve my father in shame for the rest of my life. But the father, just like Jesus, just like God Almighty, his thoughts are not thoughts. And his ways are not always. When you saw him afar off, he didn't stand here in stoutness. The word of God says the father ran to him. Yeah. 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 Took him and fell on his neck. Yeah. 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 Not only that, but he put a ring on his finger. Yeah. And gave him the best robe in the house. Yeah. And gone to him. Your habits. Mm -hmm. 
the enemy studies us. He knows I know exactly what she likes and I know how she likes.
Amen. Amen. Self-deception will cancel out the fact that God is near in your conscience. One thing about a reprobate mind is that they are so self-deceived that they have put the knowledge of God out of their mind. Now Jonah realized something. That they, they that observe lying vanity, this is verse 8. This is something that hit me hard. They that observe lying vanities, they forsake their own mercy. You walk away from your own hedge. The hedge is there, you just leaped over it. Because you left the place of mercy. But Jonah says, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. And I will pay that that I have found. So when we say, God, I promise I'm going to do that no more. I won't go there no more. I won't eat that no more. Because it's hard. It's hard. I'd rather have somebody beat. It's me, Lord. Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. I need your help, Lord. Lord, I'm trying. I'm striving. Lord. I seem to keep slipping. Lord, help me, Lord. Lord, Lord. See, I'm beginning to learn. That's holiness. That's ultra work. In your prayer closet, it's anywhere you want. And you don't have to pray out no You can pray in secret. Come into the bathroom. Help me. sacrificing to God and realizing he turned his eyes back to the temple. The word of God says that the Lord spoke to the fish. And the fish blew, vomiting him up. One thing about that which binds us as young people is when we learn to come and strive unto God, God will speak to the situation and you'll be a bad taste in Satan's mind. His experience was prophetic yes. as to what Christ would do for us. Amen. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the fish, <laughs> so the Son of Man will be three days and three whoa, whoa. nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. What was Jesus doing while he, after he gave up the ghost? He was preaching. Yeah. Uh, he was teaching. Yeah. <laughs> 
Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. 
We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.